had some overdue kayakers uh, in the vicinity of Green Bay up on uh, just north of uh, Sturgeon Bay. Um, so we, uh, we launched uh, some air crews. They went out and they searched. They were unsuccessful in finding them. Uh, we proceeded to send out a second crew um, and then uh, subsequently a third crew. So uh, throughout the night, three crews had searched along with the local fire department, the uh, Door County Sheriff's Department, uh, some other folks, uh, park rangers were also searching. Uh, as it got towards nighttime, the uh, Coast Guard called out, uh, called for assistance from the uh, Canadian Coast Guard, or uh, Canadian Air Force, and they brought in a uh, C-130, which has a uh, pretty robust sensor system. They have uh, forward-looking infrared cameras. They're able to pick up heat signatures. Uh, we had similar things on ours, but uh, our, our, ours are, were not uh, a little bit further away. So the, the Canadians were uh, um, very helpful uh, loaning their aircraft to us. So. They came down, they flew, and they continued to uh, help search through the night. So uh, my crew, we got a call. Um, or in the early morning, we, uh, we needed another crew. So we uh, grabbed our guys, and uh, we met at the base. And uh, we launched about 5.30 from Traverse City. Uh, we got on scene about 6 a.m. and uh, started searching. We followed the shoreline. We kind of looked to see if maybe uh, there were any uh, fires, if maybe there was a remote island maybe that they had uh, camped on for the night after they had drifted away. See if maybe they came out as, as sunlight, as daylight broke, uh, thought maybe they'd come out more towards the beach area. Um, as they, uh, We didn't find anybody, but we just kept trucking north. Uh, the winds were out of the south, so they would have blown them out to the open area and uh, kept searching. So um, Canadian C-130, they were flying overhead, and they ended up seeing them and uh, radioed to us. We were only about four miles away. So we got the radio call. We, we diverted. They gave us a latitude and longitude. We flew over that way and uh, saw them. We, it, it, we actually had to be about within about a mile or two to actually be able to see them. Even though, even though it was a red and yellow kayak, it was still pretty tough to see from uh, from the air and uh, in the morning. But uh, so we flew over, saw them, got into a hover, and uh, checked them out. And you know, we could see the uh, the mom and uh, her son were waving, and uh, Tommy was laying down, and we, we weren't sure about his condition, so. At that point, we decided we were going to put the rescue swimmer in, so we, uh, he hooked up. We lowered him down into the water. He swam over and checked on him and uh, decided you know, to, uh, to bring him up. So uh, just brought him over one at a time, brought over uh, Tommy first. He was pretty helpful. He was, he was kicking quite a bit, so that's always a good sign when they can help out the rescue swimmer in swimming. And uh, got him over and then uh, got uh, the other two folks and then picked him up and brought him to Menominee at the airport. And... Uh, the emergency uh, medical techs were there waiting for us and transferred them over to them. I was very excited to have an opportunity to see these gentlemen again. Um, and he talked about Scuba Man a lot, uh, Scuba Man getting him up in the basket. It makes me feel good. I'm glad, uh, glad I could be a part of it, glad uh, we were able to get out there and uh, find him.